Hi everyone, welcome to today's devotion. You know, living a Christian life is one of constant growth. Pastor Trudy in last week's message was telling us that God is calling each one of us. He's saying, come on, you can do it a little farther. Well, 2 Peter 3, 18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. God wants us to grow, to get to know him better, to live the Christian life that he is calling us to. You know, Billy Graham has written several books, and I found this guide that he had written for living a, a Christian life. I don't want to just read the list to you. I want to also share a few words and some scriptures. So number one is read your Bible daily. Hide the word of God in your heart. It comforts, it guides, it corrects, it encourages. 2 Timothy 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful to, for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Think about this. When we take the Bible in our hands, we are holding the words of God that were spoken to ancient prophets, words that have lived through the ages and continue to bring life. Number two, prayer. Prayer is one way that the life of God in us is nourished. It's communicating with our Heavenly Father. Our prayers will be answered. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, and sometimes wait, but they will be answered according to his will for our lives. Number three, rely on the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, verse 5 and 6. Those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. And verse 14 says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So we should rely on the Holy Spirit for all the choices and all the decisions that we make in our life. Number four is attend church. You know, attending church is not required for our salvation, but we meet with other believers for fellowship, for growth, for knowledge, to share our faith, our struggles, our fears, to strengthen one another up and lift each other up. Number five, be a witnessing Christian. We witness by life and by word, and the two should go hand in hand. Live in a way that shows other the faith that you have in our Heavenly Father. Share with others the hope that you have because you know Jesus personally. Let God work in your life so you can be a positive witness for him. Number six, let love be the ruling principle of your life. The greatest demonstration of the fact that we are Christians is that we love one another. Romans 12 verses 9 and 10. Love must be sincere, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love, honor one another above yourselves. You know, individually, we can't love up our whole town, but we are all part of the body of Christ, and the body of Christ can. Number seven, be an obedient Christian. Let Christ have first place in all the choices of your life. Obedience leads to blessings. Those who know us will sense the peace and the joy that we have that God has given us. Instead of conflict, there's contentment. With obedience comes experiencing God's goodness. Number eight, learn how to meet temptation. Jesus gave us the Holy Spirit to lead us and remind us that we are his. Temptation comes when we seem weak and defenseless. So be alert. Scripture is our weapon against temptation. Number nine, be a wholesome Christian. Jesus says in Matthew 12, verse 33, make a tree good and its fruit will be good or make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad for a tree is recognized by its fruit. Just as we are recognized by our actions and our words that come from our mouths, words and actions indicate what our heart is really like. So allow the Holy Spirit to fill you with wholesome attitudes and motives. And number 10, 
is live above your circumstances. Don't let your circumstances get you down. Learn to live within them, knowing that Christ is with you. God made you as you are. He placed you where you are so you can best serve and glorify him. Our hardships are opportunities to grow and trust God's purpose for our lives. We may not always understand what God is doing, but we can learn to depend on his providence, his care, his love for us, and his power. God is the only way to find true peace in a world that is in crisis. So living a Christian life is choosing daily to put God in the center of your life. I hope you have a great day. Peace be with you.